Hello everyone, welcome to the today's video for Gate on Around. The T8MC is upcoming N2 project node is one of its most ambitious, with unique advancements and something special about its transistor designs. In 2011, the semiconductor industry switched from flat transistor to 3D ones, with the now famous FinFET. Now, over 10 years later, the T8MC is joining Samsung and Intel in making another big change. Today's video, we are going to talk about the gate on around, vertically stacked, nanosheet, nanowire, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So, what is a transistor? Most simply speaking, it is a switch, actively controlled. There is a source and a drain. These are made from doping regions of silicon with a doping element implanted using an iron beam. That process is called iron implantation. Between the source and drain, we have the gate and gate oxide, which sits on the top of the channel. They control the channel through a process called capacitive coupling. When the gate reaches a specific voltage, known as threshold voltage, it switches on or opens. This allows electrons or holes to flow from the source to the drain through the channel. The ability to control the flow of these particles is called the field effect. And because the transistor uses the field effect, we call it a field effect transistor. The semiconductor material conducts only part of the time, which is why it's called semi. And since the transistor uses the field effect, we call it a field effect transistor. Initially, some of the first gates were made from metal. But today, many gates are made from polycrystalline silicon, which isn't a metal. When combined with the gate oxide, the metal gate creates what's known as metal oxide. Now we have the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, or MOSFET. In the semiconductor world, names are often quite descriptive. There are various types and designs of transistor, each with its own advantage and trade-off. The MOSFET design is the most common, and there are other types as well. For example, Bipolar junction transistors are also widely used in industry. These transistors get their name from having three regions of alternatively doped silicon or germanium, creating two junctions between the regions. In an integrated circuit, transistors are used to build logic gate and other components like memory blocks. For example, the SRAM used as embedded memory in an IC it makes a multiple transistor. In an ideal case, the transistor switches instantly. When the transistor gate is closed, no current flows through it, and when the gate is open, there is nothing to resist the flow of current. But our world is imperfect when it comes to transistor. We do expect a certain level of perfection. After years of reducing the size of the original planar MOSFET, we eventually began facing a series of issues known as short channel effects. The short channel effect comes in two forms. First, there is the threshold voltage, which is the voltage at which the gate opens and allows current to flow between the source and the drain. When the channel were longer, the threshold voltage remained constant and unaffected by external factors. However, as the channel got shorter, we discovered that the threshold voltage were no longer constant and independent. Instead, it started decreasing, what we refer to as threshold voltage roll-up. As the channel length decreased, this leads to a problem called sub-threshold leakage. When the gate voltage drops below the threshold, it should stop the current between the source and drain, but it doesn't always work perfectly, and the small amount of current that still flows like a dripping faucet is called sub-threshold leakage. The lower threshold voltage, the higher sub-threshold leakage becomes. The second major issue caused by short channel effects in a transistor is drain-induced barrier lowering or depot. This happens when the source and drain are so close together that electrons from the source can leak into the drain, sometimes by moving under the gate, almost like a rabbit burrowing. This balls lead to a small unwanted current flow, so the transistor consumes power even when it is in standby or not performing any task. When these two short channel effects are multiplied across billions of transistors, it creates a major power consumption problem. Short channel effects arise from the interference of electric fields coming from the source and drain. 
The original planar gate is positioned above the channel, making contact with only one side. The electric field extends downward through the channel into the silicon, controlling the channel's behavior. However, the sucks and drain also produce their own electric fields, which now spread horizontally into the channel, interfering with the gate control. For decades, the industry anticipated this issue. However, they managed to lessen the impact of short channel effects by lowering the voltage, heavily doping the channel or reducing the depth of the source or drain. Another key chain will replace the gate oxide, originally made of silicon oxide with one that has a higher dielectric constant. This boosts the gate capacity, making the electric field projected by the gate stronger allowing it to have more control over the channel. Famously, in 2007, Intel introduced high-k dielectrics like hafnium oxide for their high-k metal gate. This development helped pave the way for advanced atomic layer deposition techniques in the future. However, those methods have reached their limits, and a completely new structure is now needed to regain control of the channel from the source and drain. In 1984, two Japanese researchers Sakigawa and Hajashi published a paper proposing what they call multi-gate transistor. They suggested a transistor with two connected gates, which they named the double-gate metal oxide semiconductor transistor, or XMOS. This brings us to the FinFET, which enhances the gate control over the channel by enclosing it on three sides with the fin design. In 2011, Intel were first introduced the first commercial FinFET device at the 20 nanometer process node. TSMC and Samsung joined a few years later, in 2013, with their 16 nanometer and 14 nanometer nodes. The GARFET iterates on the concept of the FinFET by wrapping the gate entirely around the channel, with the name Gate All Around, which first came about in 1990 paper by Colin and others. The term actually refers not to a single specific transistor structure, but to an entire class of them. What they all have in common is that their gates fully enclose the channel, rather than covering only three sides. Within the broader GAFET category, there are two major subtypes, nanowise and nanosheet. These names reflect the shape of the channel. Nanowise channels are more rounded compared to the flatter nanosheet channels. Each structure comes with its own trade-off. For example, the smaller channels in nanowise provide their gates with greater control over electron flow. However, this increased control also restricts electron flow when the gate is open. This suggests that nanowise will likely need to be stacked. However, there is a limit to how high they can be stacked, as stacking them too high could disrupt the interconnect layers positions above them. The process for fabricating a FinFET is very similar to that of manufacturing planar transistor, which is significant. The semiconductor industry tends to progress gradually rather than undergoing drastic change. The key innovation were creating dense, highly regular cluster of fins, which are patterned onto the silicon substrate using a specific form of double patterning lithography. Following this, wells are formed to eventually create on the stroke and drain. A temporary dummy gate is added to help construct the rest of the gate stack, electrically isolate the transistor, and it then removed to allow for the formation of the actual gate. When the front end process is complete, we can move on to adding interconnects for back end. Using a deposition technique known as epitaxy, multiple layers of silicon and silicon germanium are added on the top of the silicon substrate creating what is sometimes called a super lattice. These layers are then cut through to form a fin, resembling the fins found in FinFest. Highly attention must be given to maintaining the multi-layer stack free from deformations while answering is achieves a high aspect ratio. These factors are already critical when designing FinFest. To reduce electrical crosstalk and create well-defined fins, we use a method called shallow trench isolation. This process involves defining trenches around the transistor through lithography, etching them with reactive iron etching, and subsequently filling them with oxide. Once that step is complete, the silicon germanium is etched away, leaving the silicon layers suspended between the strokes and drain. This process takes inspiration from the world of MEMS, 
where sacrifice layers are used to create suspended tiny structures. To fabricate the gate and gate oxide, we use atomic layer deposition to deposit the exposed channel wires. This highly precise technique applies layer of material with one atomic layer at a single cycle. The main challenge lies in precisely aligning the gate material around the channel. Once this is achieved, the rest of the gate can be constructed around the channels, much like in FinFest and planar transistor, and with that we have a graphite. Similar to the industry shift from planar transistor to FinFest, the transition to gate all around technology gives us many advantages. One major advantage is reduced power consumption. The study in 2020 reveals that when switched off, a nano sheet get all around transistor uses 20 to 35 percent less power compared to a FinFET, depending on the device dimensions. However, the improvement in speed and density are less pronounced. The speed sees an increase of around 10 percent as constant power, while density improves by roughly 15 percent, depending on the mix of transistor in the integrated circuit such as analog, digital, or SRAM. The power savings would be especially appealing to chip designers in mobile or AI processing applications. Mobile designers are concerned with power constraint, while AI designers deal with the high computing demands of modern AI devices. TSMC noted that they are seeing a much higher level of customer interest and investment at N2 compared to N3 at a similar stage. Graphest are point to take current AI accelerator chip to next level. TSMC has largely dominated the FinFET era for over a decade. In fact, Samsung and Intel have essentially conceded this territory, moving to get all our technology in an apparent effort to capture the market share. Samsung has been a forefront at the Graphest push, having researched the technology since at least 2003. They started with multi-brake channel MOSFET. Samsung introduced their graphite process called SF3E around mid-2022. While some products did ship during this note, they were mostly crypto minor chips with no major digital logic products. Later in 2023, Samsung launched their second generation graphite note, SF3. It remains to be seen how widely it will be adopted by foundry customer. Intel had branded their graphite technology as ribbon fat also refers to as nano ribbon or similar terms. Intel first process node to feature ribbon fat is 28. The internal node set for release in mid-2024. Following that, the 18.8 node is expected to be major leaf that could be potentially return Intel to the leadership position. Along with ribbon fat, Intel's 28 and 18.8 graph fat processes introduce another notable innovation, backside power. This involves relocating the power line beneath the silicon substrate, which gives additional space. TSMC N2 process won't include backside power until about a year later, with the release of its second generation N2 processes, N2P and N2X. This delay is viewed by many as a key advantage for Intel. Industry experts have long viewed the transition from FinFest to GraphFest as a potential turning point in the foundry competition. With the effort to achieve high volume shipments expected to secure a significant advantage, so the story goes. Only time will tell, but it's worth noting the close similarity between the process flow for FinFET and GAFET. Mastering the former will certainly provide an advantage in excelling at the latter. The planar transistor was the leading edge technology for 50 years, and the FinFET held that position for about a decade. It's difficult to say how long Graphite will stay at the forefront. So what comes next after Graphite? One promising design is the fork sheet, which consists of vertical stack sheets with a wall running through the center. The fork sheet is only a few steps beyond the Graphite in its evolution, making it an exciting development and it also offers enhanced gate control, which is a major advantage. After that, there is the complementary FAT, CFAT, where the nanosheets or fins are folded on the top of each other. This design could create a true 3D transistor. For now, the industry has yet to start considering bringing this technology into production. At the moment, we are focused on N2 and its successor. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye and see you next time.